So this project started when I suddenly had an epiphany for a highly efficient electric car, and I immediately started doodling um, the concept that you see here, eventually coming up with uh, quite a unique solution, I think, using inboard brakes, regenerative braking, um, a certain layout of the battery pack that allows for a lower height, and uh, yeah, this is what I came up with at first. This looks like a Prius, doesn't it? Hmm. So I've written all my notes on kind of what I was envisioning for this car up here. I'm not going to go through all of them, but a few of my ideas are having rear wheel drive, um, electric motor drive, of course, so we get regenerative braking. That means the rear brake discs don't have to be particularly large, because anyway, most of the braking force is going through the front wheels and the rears are aided by regeneration. So um, those brakes don't have to be large, they don't have to be replaced very often, which means that they can be inboard, which is better for handling. Uh, second idea, rather than having the battery in the floor like Teslas have, having it along a sort of central spine of the car, because that allows the seats to be lower, that means the passengers' heads are lower, that means the roof line is lower and the frontal area of the car is decreased, which is of course also better for aerodynamics. Um, and then uh, a few other things, like for example, putting the license plate here behind a shroud of gloss to improve aerodynamic efficiency. I think that's a missed opportunity on many cars. And removing the rear window, because nowadays we can use cameras and a mirror, um, or a, a sort of virtual mirror up here to simulate what would be seen out of the rear window. And it gives us more freedom with, for example, putting solar panels up here, or getting this sort of sedan shape while it um, still being a hatchback because it can be segmented at any point along here. Uh, just gives us a bit more freedom. All right, fast forward a few weeks and I've built this model of the chassis of my car. Um, I got rid of the covered rear wheels because that's sort of annoying to build in Lego, especially if your car has suspension. But I'm pretty happy with this chassis. It's extremely compact considering what's going on in here. This is a relatively small model, as you can see, it uses these small uh, Lego wheels. Um, but it has enough space for an interior, as well as being fully remote controlled and having suspension, um, which is pretty difficult to fit in. So it has, as you can see, regular independent suspension in the front with rack and pinion steering. In the back, it also has independent suspension and a differential, which was very difficult to achieve. More on that later. And then I fitted the battery box right here in the sort of trunk area. The M motor for the steering is in the front trunk, and the drive motor is actually in this center console area. If I flip the car upside down, you can see I'm using an M motor for drive, which isn't very powerful, but it does the trick for this car. It's not a particularly heavy car. Let's run through the remote control functions. I pull on this to turn it on. One M motor does the steering, it also rotates the steering wheel. Another M motor does the drive, and I don't have a lot of space here. But uh, yeah, that's the idea. It's pretty basic, but it, uh, it works very well considering the scale. Now I've removed the battery pack to give you a better look at the differential and the differential casing. Now to really illustrate why this was so tricky to do, I've set up a kind of normal differential casing. Normally it's based around a frame like this, you put the differential inside and it's secured by the frame. And then in order to get two CV joints to get an independent suspension set, um, you need at least six studs of space between the frame and the point that the wheel contacts. And as you can see, this is absolutely the most compact way that this can be done given this system. And also, as you can see, it just looks ridiculous. The wheels are way too far apart. If, if I were to build a frame like this, I would need larger wheels and my entire car would need to be scaled up and uh, even if I just use universal joints the same problem because both universal joints and CV joints have an effective length of three studs so I needed to come up with a different solution and this is what I did um, it's a little bit weird the differential is not actually held into anything it's held securely but at no point is the axle coming out of the uh, differential here actually held inside of a, uh, of a Technic hole, right? 
the instead the CV joint here, or sorry, the universal joint, is held in place by these two little stud protruding pieces there. And the whole thing is wedged in place. And it, it's solid, but it did take a little bit of creativity to come up with that. So here's a closer look at the rear suspension. These two pieces on the side act as the top wishbone, and this third piece on the bottom, attached to a third ball joint, acts as the bottom wishbone. And these all working together mean that the axle is always held horizontal. Another slightly unusual thing is that the pattern side of the wheels is facing outward. And of course I cover it up with these little discs, but that means that rather than this deep dished section being on the outside, this is on the outside and you have a lot of space on the inside of the wheel here to put things like the hub. So you can see the hub is almost entirely contained within the wheel. And that once again makes the car narrower and makes me able to fit it to the scale. Finally, let's take a quick look at the little details that I've tried to incorporate from my original sketch. You can see I've tried to show that there are disc brakes uh, at the wheels in the front and there's nothing here at the rear, just a hub. I didn't have enough space to put little discs by the differential, but that was the idea. And um, I said that the battery pack would be inside the center console on my car. And I've sort of tried to represent that here, obviously, because it's Lego, I had to put the battery um, in the trunk and then the drive motor and the receiver are inside the center console. But I thought that that was kind of a, uh, a representation of what I was going for in the drawing. Anyway, that's all for now. Um, that's as far as I got with this model. Thanks for watching and I hope to see you guys again very soon.